Larry Wheels here, guys. Today's a bit different. Today I'm doing something I haven't done before. It's new to me. I really am determined to get better at it. I want to open up about myself to you guys more often on a weekly basis so you guys know a bit more about me and realize that I am human with failures. And I hope that you guys can learn from me. Let's get right to it. If I had all the money in the world, my mom was taken care of, my girl is taking care of the people who are close to me and support me are all taken care of, then it would be, I would continue firing what I'm truly passionate about. So the thing that would get me all the money in the world is what I was passionate about in the first place, which is powerlifting, getting strong, getting as strong as possible, being the best version of myself in the gym, and then eventually outside of the gym. So I, when I first started powerlifting, there was, people around me would tell me there's no money in it. But that never stopped me from doing powerlifting because I love hitting PR, I love getting stronger. It wasn't about money. I knew there was no money. Like, oh, Larry, like if you're gonna do this, it's gonna be competitive. You're not gonna make no money, do bodybuilding. I, at the time, I hated bodybuilding. I looked at them and then said to myself, you want me to go on stage and pose in a man thong, tanned, oiled up, you know, against other naked men, man thongs, over lifting eight, 900 pounds, breaking PRs. And then I'm thinking to myself, no way, hell no. I want to be a power lifter. I thought it was more badass at the time. So it wasn't the money that attracted me to power lifting, you know? So now let's say, okay, in the future, now I'm well off. I want to put money into power lifting. I want to have big cash prizes to attract more people to power lifting because if I, I mean, I wouldn't have been anyways, but if there was, let's say, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar cash prize for winning a powerlifting, thing, oh my god, you know, that would have been like an amazing reward at the time I first started. So I want to reward those who are equally passionate about powerlifting as I was. I want to make powerlifting. I want to improve on powerlifting, meaning I want to put more money into it, more cash prizes. I also want to shorten the length of powerlifting meet. So for those of you who aren't too familiar with how powerlifting meets are run. You can spend six to 10 hours at a powerlifting meet doing a squat bench and deadlift. Whereas I feel you only need three to four hours, you know? And I try to make the meets shorter and more, more exclusive where it's not, let's say 100, 200 people going in one day. Because by the time you get to the deadlift, your, your CNS is burned out, your adrenaline's burned out. So I definitely would try to improve, improve on that. Yeah. I think they overpopulate the meets for sure. I think there's just too many people going in one day. Let's say there's 50 to 100 people going and doing the squat bench and up in one day at the same place. And they're loading the weights, they're, they're warming up. I mean, it, it just takes, it. I feel like there'd be less injury and people would have a, a more fun at meets if it was cut down to at a maximum four hours instead of dragging on to potentially eight plus hours. And then on top of that, when people go to support you at your powerlifting meet, you know, you bring your friends and family, they don't want to stick around for eight hours, you know, and then you're only lifting maybe like 30 minutes at that whole day. You know, they're there for you because hitting a squat bench and deadlift is really, it, it may be exciting to your friends and family, but your friends and family are not there to see everyone, 50 to 100 other people go, you know? So I try to cut it down to four hours so that when people, um, people aren't, uh, discouraged from going to me because oh shot up be there all day long powerlifting is for me because nothing makes me feel better than hitting a pr in the gym specifically a squat bench and deadlift pr you know when i first started working out i wanted to be the strongest guy in the gym and when i became the strongest guy in the gym the strongest guy in new york and the strongest guy in the country and the strongest guy in the world for my weight class like i just got addicted to trying to be the best trying to be number one i did powerlifting because I knew my potential and I felt like I owed it to power to the popular community to realize my potential, to reach my true potential. Because I care about being, being the best at powerlifting because I have a gift and I feel really shitty and like I'm betraying the powerlifting community if I realize I have this gift and I don't do anything with it. I couldn't sleep on that, I have a guilty conscience. I feel like I'm just wasting a gift away. And I'm so happy that I realized it and then I continued to maximize my potential in powerlifting. So it's like I owe it to the powerlifting community. Because I know there are others out, powerlifters out there that wish, you know, or are striving to be 
Larry Will Strong or Stronger, you know, and they're working on that. And I want to inspire more people to feel the way I feel when I hit a PR because it's, to me it's the best feeling in the world. Hitting a PR is not about being better than somebody else. Hitting a PR is about being better than yourself. Your biggest competition is yourself. You may have heard this before and it may sound corny, but it is so true. When I hit 500 pounds in the deadlift, my first time I hit that, I felt just as amazing and excited as when I hit 900. And every single PR feels that good because I know, shit, I'm better than I was the last time I did this. I got stronger, I made progress. I did what I was supposed to do and it feels amazing. The internet, specifically YouTube, helped me realize my potential because I, have a lot, I had a lot of spare time on my hands when I first got into powerlifting at 17. I would Google other powerlifters and I would also look up what are the world records for my age, for my weight class? What are other teenagers who, what are other teenagers doing? What are their lifts looking like? What's their squat bench deadlift? How strong are they? How do I compare? You know, because that gave me an idea of where I'm at. And then once I started comparing myself, just to get an idea of like where I'm at worldwide, I started realizing, oh shit, like I'm right there up with the best already. And I'm 17, 18. Like if I give this everything I got, I could be the best. What helped me realize my potential is when you're passionate about something, passion is probably the strongest emotion you can have. Passion can drive you to go to lengths you never thought you would go to. And that's part of the reason why it feels so good to make progress in something you're passionate about. You can be extremely passionate about being an artist and then you compare your drawings from one year to the previous year and like, holy shit, look how much progress I made. It, it matters so much to you because you're pa you love it, you're passionate about it, you wanna be the best you can be at it. And then eventually once you realize that you're passionate about it, once you find your passion and you realize that this is just something you're passionate about, you start comparing yourself to other passionate people and looking to them for motivation on how to get better. And for me, it feels so good to make progress in powerlifting because nothing, I don't put as much effort into powerlifting in anything else. Nothing drives me and brings more out of me, brings more emotion, intensity, um, dedication, consistency than powerlifting. You know, nothing like cooking or whatever, like being uh, maybe an engineer, a scientist, or being better at school. Like nothing drives me to be the best version of myself like powerlifting. That's why it feels so good to make progress in it. When I was a kid, I did deal with bullying. I dealt with poverty. I dealt with growing up in the ghetto. I dealt with living off food stamps. I dealt with being raised by a single mom with abusive boyfriends and bad, just bad influence all around me. And so I also dealt with being surrounded by people growing up who were not successful. I dealt with being around alcoholics. I dealt with being around people who in my eyes, I mean, well, like I can compare now to them because to me, if I look back then, they weren't successful. So it motivated me to, I always want to stand out from the pack. I always want to be different. And when I grew up, I didn't see a light. Like I didn't see a way to get out of poverty. And that's, I mean, for me, I feel like everyone fights that. Everyone fights like, okay, I always got to make money. I gotta be, always got to have a roof on my head, food on the table. How do I do that? What's the least problematic way to do that? So when I found powerlifting and something that I'm good at, I was like, okay, maybe I have something here. You know, maybe I knew people, I knew from people around me that there was no money in powerlifting. But at the same time, I wasn't interested or passionate about anything else. So I was sort of scratching my head like, how can I make a living off of this? Like, how can I make a living off of what I'm passionate about? Because just by doing some quick Google searches and reading some articles on the internet, you can learn that um, making money, just making money to keep the lights on is not enough, right? So I didn't want to be somebody doing a nine to five. And I've tried that. I've been, I've served tables before. I've been a person training Equinox and I hated it. I hated waking up, sacrificing my morning, afternoon, early evening, just to keep the lights off. And then I get home, I'm tired, my, my training session suffered because of it. Um, I didn't sleep right. I mean, even the people around me were feeling the same way. So I was, it was just around a lot of negativity at work. And then it just felt, I didn't like it at all. So I've learned, I'd rather 
find a way to make money off of powerlifting and social media. So tying the two together. And part of that drives me because what better way to make a living than doing off something you love to do? I'd rather make just enough money, like live check to check off of doing what I love to do, doing what I'm passionate about, powerlifting, social media, than be an officer or be like uh, something just I'm not interested at all, passionate about, or don't care about just to make a little bit more money because that's not going to keep me happy. That's not going to fulfill me. So making money, making millions or however much money I could potentially make doing this is just a bonus. I'd be doing this no matter how much money I'm making. I'd find a way to keep the lights on and just still do what I'm passionate about no matter what. And if you take away a thing and give me millions of dollars, that wouldn't make me happy. You know, like someone that hears a red book, blue you know, you can you can have a billion. Okay, not nah, that's a bit much, but you can have like a million dollars, a billion. You can have a billion dollars, but you can't do powerlifting. You can't do social media. You can't be a bodybuilder. You can't do what you're passionate about. But you can have this money. Like fuck that, because that money. When they say money can't buy happiness, it's true. But money can make problems go away. But money cannot buy happiness. We'll give you ha- we'll give you happiness is following what you're passionate about. And that has to be drilled in because it's so true. You know, and the money is just a bonus. The money is just a bonus. And typically, but if you're passionate about something, you will find a way to make money off of it. Because you will go through like every nook and cranny, every corner to make it happen. You're gonna find a way. It's gonna happen. Because when I first started, all people told me was, oh, there's no money in property. You're not going to make money. You're not going to make shit. You're going to be broke. You're not going to do body, but do something else. But here I am. I'm making a great living off of powerlifting, off of crushing PRs in the gym. So I proved a lot of people wrong. Not I don't do this just to prove people wrong. Not Nothing to do with that. But it's just a good feeling to know that it's true when they say, just follow your passion. You get told that in school by your teachers. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, but... Like, how am I going to make a living off of, like, it may sound silly, like, being an artist, you know? Like, what are the chances? But if that's something you truly love and passionate about, you'll find a way. I feel everybody is talented. And I feel the hardest part about getting started is figuring out where you're talented, talented at. And I think some of it is luck. Some of it is being at the right place at the right time, meeting the right people to guide you and kind of teach you, look, you're really good at this. Or So I'd say I met somebody who was a powerlifter. He was in, he was in the army for, for several years and he was powerlifting in the army. And he showed me the rope, he showed me what it is to be a powerlifter. Train three days a week, squat bench deadlift, how to do a squat bench deadlift like a powerlifter, the equipment to use, that kind of stuff. And in a very short period of time, I learned that I have a talent for that. But now I was in the gym just trying to get stronger because I love getting stronger. I love looking in the mirror, seeing, getting bigger, my biceps were pumped. I love the feeling of the pump. I love the feeling of adding weight to the bar every month. But if you're trying to see what you're talented at and you haven't found that yet, you may already know what it is. Because because you may already know what it is. If I ask, I've asked a few people, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you, what's your five-year plan? And, and they don't know. But if you ask enough, if you dig deep enough, I feel most people do know what it is already. But maybe they just don't believe that they could get very far doing it. They may have doubts in themselves. They may not believe in themselves. Like, oh, well, I'm kind of good at this. The thing you're kind of good at could be something you're actually talented at, but you may be undermining yourself. Because I, when I first started, I knew I was talented. I didn't think I was going to be a world record breaking powerlifter or make you know a good living off of it, but I knew I was good at it. I didn't think, so one thing I need to clear up is when I first started, I didn't think I was going to be the best. I didn't think I was going to break a world record, but I knew I was good. I knew I had some time. I was I was good. I was better than average. But because I followed that and I really loved to do it, I became one of the best at it. So that thing that you may be thinking of that you're just kind of good at, you know, you love to do it, but you're just kind of good, maybe just better than average. You keep doing that thing that you love and that you think you're just a little bit good at. 
give it five years. If you give them that everything, you could be one of the best. So if you look back at Larry Wills, if you look back at me, I want to say five years ago, I, I want to say four years ago, three, four years ago, I was a bad powerlifter. I was bombing out. I bombed out of three meets back to back in a year. I was getting hurt two, three times a year. I was, I was bad. Like I was getting ridiculed. I was tr getting trolled. Like I was not Larry Wheels. I was like, look, look at this kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. Right. But what kept me motivated to keep getting better is my attitude towards failure. When I failed, when I got hurt, when I bombed out of the meet, I was like, you know, I made sure I sat down that very moment after it happened, after I calmed down, kept uh, recollecting my composure. I, you know, and I'm like, what, what went wrong? What did I do? And an answer I hate is shit happened. Shit does not happen. If something didn't go your way because you did something wrong, no one's out to guess you. No one's out to fuck your shit up. It's because you did something wrong. You made a mistake, whether it was you weren't lifting properly whether it was you went to the gym too much that weekend and took up enough, you didn't recover, give yourself enough time to recover, you weren't eating, maybe you were partying, you were drinking, like you did something wrong for that to not go your way, right? And that's how I looked at the situation when she didn't go my way, my first few years of powerlifting. You know, there was always a reason why something didn't go my way. And it was always my fault. I always held myself responsible, accountable. I never pointed a finger, oh, it was this person's fault. It was. It was the weather that day. It was like the shoes I was wearing. It was it was always my fault, you know? So learning, so the excitement I would get learning from my mistake, but it felt amazing because I'm like, shit, now that I know this, I can get here. And it was exciting. It was like, shit, okay, I can get this much better if I do this. Because I always knew what I was supposed to be doing, but still, it's not It's easier said than done. Eat your meal. Don't miss your meal. Get proper sleep. Don't go train too much. Don't do shit just for ego. Don't do shit just for likes. Uh, shit like that. So nobody is going to be the best at anything right away. Nobody is that talented where your first year doing it, you're the best. You're one of the best. But your ability and your attitude to learn from your mistakes and stay consistent and dedicated towards just bettering yourself and really just holding yourself accountable for the mistakes you make can get you so far. Your attitude towards failure is super important. My attitude towards it is always like, what can I learn from this mistake? Because there's always something to be learned and never point finger to somebody, never. You're always one responsible. It's always your fault. When something doesn't go your way, it's your fault. It can, Cause you'll look, you, you think hard enough there was a way around it. There was a way for that to not happen or to go the way it did. And you need to think about that. My biggest failure to me would be at the Kern last year. I was super excited because this was the biggest powerlifting meet ever. The cash prize was 40,000 oh, in first place. Oh, and I was like, holy shit, I could win. I could, I could get $40,000 in first place. I could do this. But what I did, is I didn't make it past the squat because I dive bombed thinking that knowing I shouldn't do it, I knew I shouldn't do it. I did it anyway. That's where I fucked up. And I tore my quad and I was out for the meet. Done. That was it. The day was over. There goes the opportunity. Now I got to add it wait till next year, a whole 12 months before I can try that again. And it was the most frustrating feeling because I, when you, when you're powerlifting and you're going to a meet, you don't change anything last minute. That's the most important piece of rest. Don't change anything last minute. Do exactly what you've been doing the last 12 weeks of prep. Do not think if I do this differently today, it's going to work out better because it will, it will not absolutely work out better. Just do what you've been doing. So that was by far my biggest fear. It was my biggest disappointment. It crushed me. I was like, I cannot believe this just happened. And I knew I never dive bomb and train. I never just squat down as quickly as possible, expecting a rebound. Yeah. Thinking back, it's still frustrating, but I learned from that. I learned. Because when I worked with my physical therapist after that injury happened, he taught me the safest way to squat. And that is by being much slower and controlled on the eccentric. Not never dive bomb, especially when working with 90% plus V1 or max. Controlled, slow, because you're strong in the eccentric. You're not gonna, you're not going to be weaker going slower. If anything, you're gonna be under more control of the weight. And the, the chances of injury is extremely low versus if you dive bomb and rely on momentum to carry you up. 
So that's what I learned from that. And now ever since then, I have not gotten hurt. So, so you needed that. I needed that. I needed that mistake to happen. And another thing too, someone, Bradley has been teaching me that mistakes are gonna keep coming. You're always gonna make a mistake. It's part of living. And it can be hard to come to terms with that, hard to accept that. Like you're always gonna fuck up. You're always gonna make mistakes. But it's how you learn from those mistakes that makes you the person you are today. How you learn from those mistakes, how your attitude towards it, and then what you learn from it. Because I learned, what I learned from that is gonna stick with me and help me progress for years to come. If I didn't learn anything from that, if I just thought, oh, well, it was just like a fluke, it was just uh, just some shit that happened. I remember some guy told me shit happens that day. Like, it couldn't have been prevented, and it pissed me off, like, yeah, I know this could have been prevented. And I hate hearing shit happen. It can always be prevented. There's always a way around, a way around that. Shit does not just happen. So I learned from my physical therapist, because of that injury, how to properly squat. How to squat, the safest way to squat. And that'll stick with me for years to come. Personal record is my brand now, and personal record is more than just hitting a PR in the gym. Pure personal record is making progress outside of the gym, meaning relationships, making progress with people, your girlfriend, your mom, your close friends, you know, because there's a lot of work to do outside of the gym, just a small part of your life. This is a couple hours out of your day. What about the other 22 hours? You know, so making PRs out of the gym is, is just as important, if not more important than making PRs in the gym. And over time, I'll help you guys understand exactly what that means. I'm super excited about PR. I, I have been grateful to have sponsors help me get to where I'm today because let's face it, you know, money can get in the way. Right now, I'm finally at a point where I can do my own thing and represent what I truly want to represent and my vision. And I'm also working on creating a movement, whereas you don't have to be one dimensional. You can, you can be a bodybuilder, a powerlifter, a strongman competitor, and be successful at all three, be great at all three. There's no need to just pick one path. There's many paths and you can be great at all of them. Taking, um, by doing it the right way. Hitting PRs in the gym relies heavily on learning from your mistakes in the gym prior to hitting that PR. So you learn from those mistakes, you hit a PR. That's life right there. Whether it's you making a one year anniversary with your new girlfriend, that's a PR. Now you hit one, you hit one year, now let's do two years. Let's get that PR. You started as a waiter at, your, at a restaurant. Now you're the manager. Maybe now you're part owner of that restaurant. That's a PR, you know? And all the mistakes that it took you to get from a waiter to damn near owning part of the restaurant, like those, that's, that's PR right there. And PR to me, it's just being the best version of yourself and always drilling that in. Being the best version of yourself. Taking the blame, learning from your mistakes, and being the best version of yourself. That's PR. All right, guys, we're coming to the end of the video. I'm extremely grateful you guys made it this far. This is not a video of hitting a 900 deadlift, a 600 plus bench, a under squat, or you know, hitting a crazy uh, feat of strength in the gym. This is a video about me opening up, opening up to you guys. And I still have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of... Um, improvements to be made about this part of it and i just really grateful that you guys stuck around to the end to hear what i have to say because i will get better at it i will get better at you know, articulating myself explaining myself to you guys and i know that there's a lot of things that i've went through that i can help you guys go through because we're all going through something we're all struggling you know so if i can make that struggle easy for you guys that makes me feel good it's starting i'm starting to make my life now more about giving back because you guys have given so much to me so with that said you know, like, subscribe, post notifications on, and stay tuned for the next one. Much more to come. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect.